the world today faces challenges that are both complex and unprecedented in their nature, gravity and urgency in inequalities both within and among the nation are deepening <coughs> and the ideals of cooperation, collaboration, solidarity, solidarity are wavering. These problems also further exasperated by emerging threat, primary climate change, preliminary climate change, digital divide, crisis such as COVID-19 pandemic. Like any other part of the world, our region has been fighting an epidemic battle against pandemic over the last two years. Hundreds of thousands of people have died, many have displaced, many have relapsed into the poverty and the structural vulnerabilities have deepened. Even if the pandemic curve seems to the flattening gradually, the fight for this is far from over. The economic and development consequences are sure to play out for the quite some time. <clears throat> Vaccine inequity have been have become yet another impediment to the resilience recovery. The pandemic has added further strain to the economic of the ministry countries, which are already facing in the endemic poverty, unemployment, low level of productivity and growth. In this context, our summit today carries a higher significance. Given the unusual times we are meeting in, it is true testament to the resilience of our regional spirit. A place place of unity and solidarity and a crucial step forward for our cooperation and collaboration. It is a commitment to the shared goal, peace, a shared goal of peace, progress and prosperity as enshrined in 1997 Banker Declaration. In fact, Theme of today's summit, we mistake towards resilient regions, prosperity, prosperous economy, healthy people, resonate very well with spirit of declaration and challenges we are facing now. Two, our organization has made some important achievements over the last 25 years, be it in terms of clarity, of mandate, legal framework, formal institutional, institutional arrangement, or sector specific cooperation. The fourth summit held in Kathmandu was a significant maker of the renewed urgency recommitting re 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 to build robust BIMSTIC, particularly through institutional reform. It mandates the negotiation of the Charter, recommended the rationalization and restructuring of the sector, subsectors, and call for strengthening secretariat. We are pleased that we are going to sign a Charter, adopt, adopt the important instrument of mutual legal assistance and establishment of BIMSTIC technology transfer facility and indoors rationalization of sector, indoors rationalization of sectors and subsectors. This will certainly be a key milestone in the history of our organization. That way, you serve it into a new era. But it is not sufficient an organization 
of 1.7 billion people and a combined GDP over 3 trillion, trillion US dollars must set higher ambition for regional integration and cooperation. We, we must master the requisite political will to ensure that the mistake process regardless hope and resonate, resonate the imagination. We must breathe new life into the organization by pulling the strength of our natural resources, as well civilization and diverse cultures and heritage. We must better frame the future of cooperation to translate our ambition into the action and leverage with the potential and resources for our people, our countries and our region. This will require concrete action on several fronts. First, our race to resilience must start with a green, flexible, inclusive recovery plan. This means action on vaccine investment in the health system and expansion of social protection scheme together with the structural reform and quality investment, physical and human capital. The mistake must do its part to ensure that region built back better from the pandemic and is well prepared for any future shock and disasters. It needs to chart our sustainable and resilient pathway to deal with the long-term economic, social and development consequences of COVID-19. In this connection, I would like to share with you that the vaccine drive in Nepal had been gaining a strong, strong monument, momentum. We have so far received over 47 million vaccines, fully vaccinated, close to 68% of our target implementation and about 99% of the eligible people have received at least one dose. This has been possible due to the support of cooperation of our neighbors, development partners, COVAX facilities, and entire international community, we remain grateful to them for their goodwill and valuable assistance. Second, with, with less than a decade left, our region is not tracked to achieve any substantial development goal by 2030. 